Christina Wilkerson. I'm coming to you guys today as a student of Northwestern State University presenting to you all my staff development project um, in regards to blood transfusions. First and foremost, I want to congratulate all you new grads and want to just say welcome aboard and we can't wait to have you guys side by side working with us out in the medical surgical unit. So today we're going to talk about um, in initiating pack red blood cells and basically we do this on the med surge floors and in the intensive care on a, basically to treat acute and chronic anemias, um, low H and H's due to maybe um, blood loss in surgery or acute injury or whatever the case may be. Uh, for recording purposes we in timing, I have already um, primed my tubing and the basic things that you would need prior to starting your, trans, or your blood transfusion is one, a physician's order to have it done, and two, the patient has to sign consent to have the tr uh, transfusion take place. Um, secondly, um, you, uh, you will need a second RN to verify um, your blood. That's done at bedside. You're gonna match the blood with the arm band. You're gonna check the expiration dates, the compatibility of the patient's blood to the donor's blood, um, and the unit number. Red blood cells are always transfused um, with a backup of normal saline, no other type of solution. First, you will always wanna glove up. It's very important with, um, when dealing, wash your hands and glove up, which is very important when dealing with any type of bodily fluids. I know this is basic, but there's nothing wrong with a little reminder, right? Yes. Good. So after we've checked consent, after the, you and the nurse have checked the blood to make sure that everything lines up with the blood band, the blood unit, the donor's compatibility with your patient's compatibility, you're gonna go in, things that we may need with normal saline, your packed red blood cells, your IV machine, and of course, blood tubing. You wanna make sure at the start of your um, transfusion, all your tubings are closed off. And again, we I have pre-primed this tubing for purposes of time, okay? You will open up your normal saline, spike it, open up your tubing and squeeze. Have a little come down in your chamber. At this time, and you all will get to do this um, when you come up and simulate after recording is done. You will prime it like you would any other um, inf uh, solution that you're going to infuse, and it'll go all the way down until you get to the end. After that, you will close off your normal saline. And if you don't, if you open this, it'll all back up into your normal saline, okay? You'll close off your normal saline. Open up your packed red blood cells. Spike, open, and squeeze. At this time, you will leave this tubing open, allowing again the blood to circulate down and, and prime to the end. This is called priming, again, just like you will with any other solution. Okay, when you start your blood transfusion, here the protocol is used, you have to have a baseline of, eye, um, of vital signs. So you get your blood pressure, your temp, your respiration. Okay. After that, you wanna go on and connect everything to your patient. Again, you're just gonna simulate. Start your transfusion at 75. Mind you, keep in mind that this is already primed, it's connected to your patient. Start your transfusion at 75. You are to stay in the room with your patient for about 15 minutes, noting any reactions, if there is any, and any changes in the patient's status. Once your 15 minute mark, once you meet your 15 minute mark, you go ahead on and you can stop it and increase your rate to 125. 
and you're done, make sure that you go on and document if there was any reaction, the time that you started your transfusion, the time that you increased your infusion, and any other things pertinent to the start of the transfusion. If you guys have any questions or any concerns, I'll be around right before we start simulating how to initiate a blood transfusion. Thanks.